uh it's it's lovely absolutely yeah. lovely for um over here it's uh just sunny 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 so yeah. what a treat i was actually sitting out the back uh today um and i was talking to a guy for about maybe 15 20 minutes and then i realized my face is really hot and you know you, you run back in and you kind of take your shades off and you go oh no so you can <laughs> see i can't find my face but see the white line see? <laughs> So my face is oh my, no, not the sunglasses. Face is better than normal. Oh, the plus side, hi Pam, hi Heather, hi guys, hi Jude. My, my teeth look quite out of normal because my face is burnt, so that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Considering what we're talking about tonight, so we're we'll laughing. Yeah, well, that's it. You know, we, we're all sort of like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> scrubbing your teeth. Did you scrub your teeth a lot now before we came on tonight? Do you know what we should do? We should start giving out awards to people. The first person on gets something. I can't remember what, but uh, I mean, Heather Stevens was out of the traps there and beat everybody by about 10 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> fresh, refresh, come on. Oh, I've got to do this, by the way, guys. Sorry. Uh, let me just see if uh, uh, you, you might, guys you might can... have noticed. They probably didn't notice because he's he's the, he's the least relevant of the three for sure. But here we yeah, go. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> we're, down to, we're down to two tonight, guys. Nick's Wi-Fi. He's at home using his Wi-Fi at home, and his, his Wi-Fi is just absolutely brutal. And it would be far too frustrating. He was up and down and doing that. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's too unreliable. So it's a half an hour drive back out to his, his clinic. So there's just no point he's doing that. So it's uh, me and Bren tonight, guys. But don't worry, we've um, we've got Nick's we've comments, filled um, out everything. Yeah, I was going to put the the picture of the old goat up, but I think you should. That would have been good. Yeah, no ginger goat. <laughs> Um, so how'd you get on, Ben? How was your week? Did you get up to anything exciting? Uh, no, just been enjoying the weather. We're preparing the ground. We've got building works going to start soon, and we've just got so much going on. It's yeah. uh, but clinics so busy, uh, yeah. really, really busy. Uh, managing just uh, getting through the COVID stuff, and you know, hopefully, we'll be through that soon, and we'll yeah. have people start coming back in. And are you doing Zoom consoles? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are your staff um, as well? Is that, it does Terrawood do, terrawoodvets.co.uk, do they do, uh, is Zoom a big part of business? Yeah, absolutely massive, um, especially for the complementary side. So, you know, that uh, gets us out and about and uh, um, that side. So it's great. Yeah, we yeah. we'd do that. We've done that for a long time um, anyway, but uh, with COVID, it's certainly uh, kicked off. But we're just really getting people back used to how we can do consults. And we've been doing uh, where animals will come in but owners are staying outside. So yeah. um, obviously oh, by yeah. phone uh, and that side of things and when we get to examine the animals. Um, and, you know, it, that's been the best part of a year now. So we're just sort of like really getting to the point where we want to get back to seeing people face to face. And yeah. uh, um, hopefully some one day soon it will be no masks. But, you know, yeah. until that time, hey-ho. I wonder when that's going to happen, really. Yeah, well, yeah. there we go. So... Um, few bits uh and how are you how's how's your week Good. been yeah uh busy same as yourself just uh, flat out um i like just reviewing a couple of the posts i put up during the week um and i just want to highlight two that i put up because they're great talking points one of them i just without thinking really i just lashed up uh, threw up a picture of a big tin of sardines that was a particularly good price in, in tesco's and i said check it check this out pilchards in tomato sauce and i said you know on the on the back of the seniors uh, podcast that we did or chat that we did where, you know, a little bit of lycopene goes a long way. And uh, so why not? And cook tomatoes, more lycopene. So why not use the odd tin in tomato? I always recommend in fresh water, brine, pour off the brine, whatever. But I didn't probably take enough care to highlight to people like occasional because people say, you know, they go bananas and they dog can't live on sardines. <laughs> it's like, you know, I'm not talking about living on sardines, but just a little bit. And people were worried about the you know, and the salt and stuff. And, you know, so it is interesting to get that feedback, though, because you have to, it is a nice little addition to people. Um, that was definitely the conclusion. But more yeah. to the point, I just wanted to highlight a little rant I had that most people have seen at this stage um, during the week. Because I had this, I had this consult with somebody. It was a food allergy consult. The dog was clearly a roaring case of, you know, leaky gut type uh, issue. Just a NASA like reading of proteins he can't have. And you look at it with a bit of dread, going, "Oh my God, how am I going to even start here?" Um, and the the, uh, the dog was consuming, uh, was eating ZD, and that's I wouldn't normally name the brands except that it's important in the, in this particular issue. 
And one of the things that came up in the food allergy test, blood test that she did was an IgE response, so your a proper allergy response yeah. to beet pulp. And I thought, well, that's kind of rare. You don't see that too often. All the other meats weren't IgE, so that wags her tail a bit. You think, oh, that's good. Um, anyway, I go to Hill ZD on the UK website, on the main website, hills.co.uk, to the ZD. I go to the ingredients panel of ZD, and listen to the ingredients. Listen to how short this is now. It reads, cereals, comma, meat and animal derivatives, comma, derivatives of vegetable origin, comma, oils and fats, comma, minerals. That's the ingredients panel. Mm. of a product with hundreds of ingredients in it. So I have no idea what cereals, what meats, what plant proteins. Is beet pulp in there? Probably. Uh, yeah, but they all, I would have thought, not most dry foods use it. It's not unreasonable yeah. to assume it might be in there. But more to the point, how does a vet recommend it if the, if the panel isn't there? I was since told that on the uh, American website and Australian website, the fuller ingredient panel is there. But the fact that they can even put that up there on the .co.uk website, their main thing, it's kind of, I thought it was indicative of... Really interesting, actually. This this is something that uh, occurs in a number of items, uh, including vaccines. So in mm -hmm. Europe, they have to put um, all of the excipients, including some of the really, you know, down to nanograms worth, yeah. you know, the things like thiomersal. Okay. But in the UK, they don't have to declare it. If they've washed it through and it's, you know, they don't see it as a major constituent, they just ignore it. It's amazing yes. the stuff that we let them get away with. Yeah, yeah. It just drifts into it. And that's it. it well, that's really the whole point of the piece, right? It's a, it's a drift. It's like, well, we permit them to say um, meat meal instead of meat and bone meal, which in the industry is bone meal. It's bone mm -hmm. meal to farmers. It's meat and bone meal because it contains a tiny bit of meat on the bones. And it's meat yeah. meal to pet food producers. There's no bone in it. It's just pure meat. And now <laughs> instead of calling it meat meal, they call it dried meat. It's like that is preposterous. It's yeah. such a leap. From, dry, from meat meal, which is the lowest of the low animal protein you could possibly source, to yeah. dried meat and dehydrated meat. They're the two terms they use for it, which is so misleading. Um, and I think it's because we keep letting them away with it. So I got really angry. I got really angry, and I had a big rant online. But uh, uh, anyway, the people come with you because... <laughs> you like so, so we can see yeah. that on dogsfirst.ie. Yeah, check that out. It was on Dogs First. It was on the Facebook page. I'm, I'm, fed up, um, I'm, I'm put, putting my stuff on Facebook again. But anyway, that was my week, Brendan. Uh, little rants like that, and then getting over those rants, and that's it. Uh, oh wow! That yeah. So, wow. yeah, so, so today, Brendan, we are talking about teeth. Have you got your model handy of what a beautiful dog mouth looks like? Which probably is. Second. I do just happen to have <laughs> said model. Okay. Look at that, beautiful. There we go. Okay, so that's what we want, guys. Okay, we should do a little poll at some point, I think, on Facebook. I want to know all of you people that have started off raw food feeding, if your dog's mouths look like that, okay, um, or do they look like that? And I oh, can yeah. guess which they're going to be, okay? But there we go. That's yeah. that's that's the model. We'll talk about teeth. This is this is what it's all about today. You okay. want that. Right, so yeah. We're going to go through... Uh, all sorts of bits like that. But first, I would just like to thank um, all of the 105 oh, yes. people who are on uh, Patreon. Um, you know, thank you so much for your support. It's helping us. Um, we are so close, except for the occasional twitchy eyes in front of the bright lights. Uh, we are so close to getting that, that first seminar uh, ready. So keep an eye out for that, guys. Um, and I think What's for the, the um, other bits... Yeah, also, also patrons, uh, um, um, Paleo Ridge, thank you, um, are a, a fantastic sponsorship. So thanks to Paleo Ridge, who are in their uh, fourth, possibly fifth week of sponsorship now. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. Paleo Ridge are fantastic. Um, so like, you know, UK's favorite raw dog food two years in a row, that is saying something. You don't get that too easily. Uh, and also the most accredited raw dog food company in the UK. One of those accreditations involves an audit, which is scary. Uh, uh, auditing of any company to put yourself forward for an audit is a very, very scary thing. And that is kind of what you're doing with Raw Safe, Brendan. It's the same idea to bring in more of this because yeah. it's not being done in certainly in dry food. And we bring it into raw dog food with such an accolade. So any company that puts some steps forward like that, like that and takes a few shots, uh, maximum respect. I just wanted to highlight that uh, Paleo Ridge do these uh, hampers, like a kind of to lure you in hampers. Fantastic little mix, free delivery, and you get 20% off on your first order. So check out paleoridge.co.uk. And thanks very much, guys, for the sponsorship tonight. It really helps us get the plan uh, in action. So thanks for that. So, uh, so yeah, so on with the show, Brendan.
Um, yeah. Why? Why is it like so? Tar just tell me a little bit about uh, why tartar is going to be so bad for their health. Right. Okay. I mean, this is a really important point, and and it's a really common question. We see so many animals come in, um, and actually, it's not just about what's happening with their teeth. You know, most people will be thinking of their own mouths, and they'll be thinking about dental pain and abscesses, and you know, the agony that that can cause. But actually, you know, when you come in and you've got um, teeth like that, okay, the issue that you've got with that is every time they eat, okay even actually just if it's just the redness here every time they eat they are actually injecting bacteria so they've done studies to take blood samples um, when they're at rest and then as soon as they start eating they take a blood sample and they can see the bacteria that start to get circulated as soon no as they're way. eating so it's really easy to understand then the consequences that that can have and we understand that there's diseases like endocarditis um, that's an infection of the valves of the heart and the, the you know in, in the interior of the heart um, can get infection on on those areas and that's seeded by bacteria that have gone in bacteremia as we call that no way. Um, kidney disease is another one uh, yeah. so actually getting pyelonephritis so infection of the kidneys um, uh, can happen with that even down to just remember the amount of inflammation that causes but getting things like tias you know transient ischemic attacks where the the blood vessels of the brain spasm they go they almost have vestibular type symptoms or you know the, the dizziness or almost like strokes but they're temporary and um, that can be all down to those bacteria circulating so mm -hmm. you know think about it's not just about the teeth this is about across the board. And if you go back to our pancreatitis video, you'll realize again, that's all about uh, looking at infection and inflammation yeah. causing that level of disease. It's, I, I saw that uh, people with dirty mouths and animals with dirty mouths have a lower immunity. They're more prone to infection. And if you think about this whole kind of, you've got so much immunity to go around, so much force field to go around, that uh, the tartar and invading bacteria at the gum line constantly. It's a constant draw on resources. So the body sends the troops into the gums to stop this onslaught. So you get that red line and pain and swollen. And uh, the problem is that that immuno debris that's constantly being formed, the battleground of the mouth has to be cleared away by the kidneys. So you're clogging up kidneys. I often think about it like a like a busy motorway. Would that be, is that true, Bren? Is it like, can you overload the kidneys with too much kind of this is that not where a lot of the kind of a kidney chronic kidney disease can come with teeth or is it only because of a bacterial infection well it's inflammation i mean yeah okay. anything that leads to inflammation uh and you know all of the other consequences of having the, you know any bacterial disease or any illness uh and yeah. the pressure that that can cause uh you know and the damage to the, the filtration beds of the kidneys, you know, that's all going to put a pressure on those for yeah. the renal disease. But, you know, we often look at pyelonephritis infections of the kidneys uh, as being partly down to those circulating bacteria. Okay, cool. Yeah, I saw somebody put up a cool image of something that they were selling related to teeth, and they put up a picture of an iceberg, and it's only the tip of the iceberg is the dirty tooth, and then underneath that is all the issues that come with it. It's not just a rotten yeah. smile and, a, and smelly breath. Halitosis, smelly breath, is that just bacteria farts that are living in your mouth? Not just that. You know, that we've got to remember, okay, it's not just the teeth that can cause halitosis. So, you know, there'll be other things that we're going to talk about in the future, uh, uh, other podcasts okay, that yeah. we'll talk about what's happening in the gut and my favorite subject of microbiome. Yeah. Uh, but I think from a point of view, of the obvious one is teeth, you know, yeah. and... But we do have some dogs that will, you know, have halitosis, but seem to have relatively good teeth. So yeah. that's down to all sorts of other factors. But absolutely, you know, the, the classic Yorkshire Terrier that comes in at age 16 oh, and, you know, you, you yeah. can smell it, walk into the waiting room, let alone walk into yeah, your consult room. Poor little man. Uh, yeah. And it's just like, yeah. Mm. So you're presented with this. Um, we, I can go about how I would kind of do it as a non-vet, but how, if you're presented with a dog with a very mucky mouth, very tartar, you know, in a bad way, just tell us a very quick bit about the process where if the, if the dental is unavoidable, can you tell us just very quickly, what does, what's premium dentition, what's premium dental dentistry look like in the veterinary world? How do you do it? Uh, what's it look like for the dog and what's the recovery like? Yeah. Okay. So look, you, you, you get what you pay for in, in some respects, and you've got to understand that, you know, dentistry has come a long way from, um, you know, just knock them out, 
clean them up and send them home okay and certainly or or, or even just pulling teeth you know you know leaving it till they're bad enough that you can pull teeth um, and it's very much followed the human. You know, you wouldn't go into a, a dentist and expect them to knock you out, clean your teeth, take out, uh, you know, any horrible ones uh, and totally extract them and then send you home having had a full general anaesthetic. You know, that that's just not what happens these days. So we do very much what you know, your dentist would be doing for you, which is, you know, go in, scale them, Look at taking some x-rays so we can see what's happening below the gum line. Surely a um, dog won't take a scaling. Sorry? Surely a dog won't take a scaling so easily. No, no. So you literally, you will have to give them a sedative, okay? Just so that you can get that ultrasonic scaler in, okay? Clean them up and do the x-rays. So they can do that under sedation. I mean, the initial bit is going to be looking, practically looking at them. We're not going to book them mm -hmm. in unless they need something. Uh, but I would say... Um, you know, you've got to be cautious with those scalers, okay? The, the metal being on tooth and how it's used and, you know, making sure that it's not used too frequently. You certainly don't want to be booking your dog in on a monthly basis or yeah. even a three-monthly basis to have that done because it will damage the enamel, ultimately, if you're doing it that frequently. Uh, and we know that there are other preventative ways, which we'll touch on later tonight, um, that we can keep that at bay if they've started to build up plaque. But I would definitely say they're in cleaned we then take photographs we then take um x-rays we then have a conversation if there's emergency extracts because there's fractures or they're really loose then we'll talk to the owner about those and then we then reflect on okay this is the work that needs to be done these are what we need to schedule if we just need to do a quadrant uh, of teeth that we need to concentrate on work we'll do that so they're not painful all over with extractions um, because you don't want your dog out for, you know, two or three hours, you know, having dental work and reconstruction and stuff done. Um, you know, you, you want literally them to be in in a controlled manner, do the few teeth that are really essential, and then let's schedule the other parts. So that's yeah. really what gold standard sort of dentistry is these days. And you should be then talking to your um, your vet about you know relevant pain relief um you know what's happening as far as how we're going to manage those um bacteria there are a few great things uh with the microbiome that we can talk about you know luca we've mentioned in the past they do a dental spray um yeah, which yeah. will reduce some of the bacteria. guys so it's like yeah. using as opposed to using anti-life to kill the nasties they use probiotics positive life in yeah. the mouth which kind of a uh, competitive exclusion for want of yeah. a, for want of it that's luca that product's called but guys yeah, yeah. And it's really important with with some things like that. There are some bacteria that have been found, okay, porphyrmonas bacteria, that are actually related to some things like uh, pancreatic cancer. So um, I'm saying from them, um, um, I'll get the name out, Bellingug. Bellingug, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just remember that, you know, some of those uh, infections that they're finding and the relevance to other disease, as we've That's been saying. Because people wonder sometimes, you're presented with quite a healthy dog sometimes and they're raw fed and they're ticking a lot of the boxes that would usually exclude them from the pancreatitis kind of argument. And uh, so this Rowan was saying was this is a, something that he, he's, he's absolutely convinced that this bacteria, after what he's reading, is linked. This is one possible kickoff of it. So that's interesting. I haven't read that, Brian. So if you have that study, send that on to me afterwards. Yeah, Obviously, yeah. I want to know more about it. Oh, there's a few, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's actually well documented. Uh, oh, no actually, way. around uh, the turn of the millennium. No way. Uh, there's quite a lot on. Brady, I'm way behind. 20 years there. behind. You should yeah, just publicly. Absolutely. Sorry about that, guys. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> a, lot of that, a lot of that is in humans. Oh, cool. Is, yeah. Um, um, I think a lot of people mistook the link between pancreatic cancer and pancreatitis. Yeah. And that's something that's also oh, cool. um, no, that's yeah, interesting. mistaken. Um, somebody just asked a little while back there, and she made sure that I was going to ask tonight, um, was that, let's say your dog has a root canal, just very briefly, what is root canal? And also... Uh, is there a long-term implications of root canal in your dogs? What are you worried about there with that root canals? Okay, so root canal is really denervating the the, the nerve root of that tooth to stop the pain. Um, now, just as with uh, us, the let's just see if I've got a, a part on here. But just as with us, right, let's show you here. Uh, inside the tooth there is a pulp cavity and that contains the blood vessel and the nerve. Because it's alive. Now, 
So yeah, absolutely, it's alive. Mm. That, that tooth is constantly, um, just like bone, okay, is a living thing. Um, and it's got a blood supply. Um, the uh, cells that are in there receive nutrients, okay, constantly within the dentine. Now, unlike our teeth, if you break the very tip of the enamel or um, the, you know, get wear and tear on the very surface, the dentine can harden up pretty quickly. So we don't panic. If they've chipped a part of their tooth, yep. often we will just say, look, just keep going, keep it clean. They'll be fine. OK, don't panic about that. Sometimes they'll even bruise the tooth and you'll get a discoloration. So it'll go a dark blue um gray color and you'll panic that the tooth has died and uh, something horrible is happening to it but that's just like if they've taken a knock it's just that the blood has bled into the dentine and it's yeah. discolored it and actually if you leave them long enough they that's will long. very slowly just go through that whole bruising process just like your skin my brother's front tooth did that <laughs> okay yeah, yeah, it, takes time. yeah. it does take time to to, to go through that bruising process. So a lot of people panic at that point and think the tooth's dead, we've got to do something major yeah, about I would have it. That. Um, but I would definitely say that it's only really if they get an opening of that pulp cavity and they manage to get infection in, which then can be seen on x-ray to be causing root um, damage and ultimately infection, that they may, you know, there are dental surgeons out there that will drill the tooth take out all of that infected material, debride it, and then pack that back with a filling material and rebuild the crown. Okay? Wow. So it's quite intense, quite Is detailed. That one sitting? Is that one sitting? That sounds like a horrible amount of work. Well, it's, uh, there's a little bit of the clean out stuff. They'll put a temporary cap in and then they'll, you know, re-go in and then fill the tooth and, and they'll, oh, yeah. you know, they're putting a crown on for those people that really are, um, you know, want to be doing that uh, that special sparkly tooth. You know, they do those lovely shiny um, coverings and things like that. Yeah, yeah. make them cool. look like Goldie. Like I was just um, going to say, nice little dollar sign on their fangs. Cool. <laughs> if, you, if you're going to be bitten by a dog, it might as well have a bit of class. Um, so, so that's the kind of that's that's the, the cleaning of the teeth side of things. And I, I can't believe we're already kind of halfway through here, Brent. Um, so. Uh, if the, if with oldies, the, the, the concern that most people have is with, by the time your teeth are really bad in some dogs, you've been living on, let's say, uh, an, they say hassle factor. That was a word that was coined by a guy called Coiler in the 30s, 1930s. Coiler was a guy that the zoos employed to find out why all their animals were dying so young, and um, particularly the carnivores. And he very quickly made the leap between the rotten teeth that they were having and the teeth that were being pulled and the lack of hassle factor. They were being fed mushed meat as opposed to meat on the bone. So he was the first guy to bring in and vets. You need hassle factor, needs meat on the bone. And he brought out a couple of very simple studies and a couple of other things, Fagan in the 50s. And they started finding out that vet, that animals, zoo animals that had loose teeth and wobbly teeth could be very much saved by giving them meat on the bone because they'd work them. Yeah. And it can actually cement the tooth back in the bone because I just saw somebody comment there about wobbly teeth and the vet wanted to take it. And I want your opinion on this. If this is me as a non-vet, so I'm freer to say kind of weirder stuff. But if I saw a dog with wobbly teeth that wasn't in pain and you might, you know, there's lots of things you can do for a dog that has mucky teeth that doesn't involve a dental first. So, for example, if I could just call out two studies here on dogs with, uh, listen mm -hmm. to this, Brown and Park in 1968 periodically replaced the moist kibble ration in 30 dogs um, that were displaying tooth loss with, uh, and dental calculus with beef oxtail. Two thirds of the dog's calculus was removed within 24 hours. This increased by 95% in week two. The 200 dogs were fed oxtail for more than six years and in inverted commas here, no harmful effects were observed. I think that's really good. 200 dogs mm -hmm. oxtail, that was, that was uh, produced in, uh, I can't remember which journal. But more recently, 2016, they evaluated beef bones, which isn't the bone we're going to recommend down the line, and it reduced uh, dental calculus by 57% after three days, 82% after 12 days. So like, the point is, if you've got a dog, a really old dog, and we don't want to put the old dogs out because it must be a little bit riskier for you to do it, it can't be something you're looking yeah. forward to, well, surely the first thing would be, I, with vets like yourself, I'm, I'm sure it might be, where like it's like, okay, can we try the dog on some raw meaty bones and a few other little bits and pieces that we can talk about later? to try and set those teeth to clear off the worst of the tartar, at what point do you say, I'm going to have to just get in there and help the dog? Is it 
purely based on how uncomfortable the dog is. Absolutely. Pain, pain is paramount. Okay? okay. So if the welfare issues for the dog, you know, they're juddering mouths, they're you know, really uncomfortable. We often have to make that decision of, of going in because we juddering can't. What's, in what's, that, what's a juddering mouth? So that's the nerve endings. Okay. Within the tooth. So as they're trying to pick up anything, they might suddenly end up with a, a jarring nerve. It's wow. that, that electric sort of like yeah. jar that you get. Okay. Um, and so those are the things, you know, that there are certain things like hypericum can be really useful in those cases. Um, and they What's can that? dull that pain. That's a homeopathic medicine. Um, you know, St. John's wort, it's, uh, um, it's oh, yeah. really useful for nerve pain, for stabbing pains, things like that. Uh, so that can be really useful. Um, even Arnica, um, Calendula can be okay, really yeah, useful okay. to, to help um, reduce the infection around the teeth. Yeah. There's things like Fragraria we might use, wild strawberry, which um, again helps to remove tartar and plaque. Um, but, how, do you, how do you use the wild strawberry? Uh, so literally as a remedy, 6X to 6C, that sort of potency, and you're just spraying it onto the gum and let that absorb and the six body starts to react. 6C sounds like homeopathic uh, yeah, dose. Yeah. Okay, I don't know much about that. So these are options there. Can you buy uh, these online, Brendan? Sorry for cutting across you. Yeah, yeah, they can. Absolutely. Everything. You can yeah. get those. Uh, you know, most homeopathic pharmacies will give you a 30 C, C and below. OK, so you can access those. Um, look, there's loads of other pro you know, products out there as well for teeth. I mean, you've got Canadan out there. Yeah, think, you? yeah Canadan keeps, keeps my lights on, to be honest. That's a very popular product. It's a kind of seaweed-based uh, product. But like there was, um, there's, there's kind of a lot of different... Uh, um, the natural solutions is, is is a lot. There's a lot on the market. It's, there's a seaweed based ones all over the place, uh, but they also use um, they make you can make your own toothpaste from usually uh, algal based things. But I'm so interested in the strawberry thing because that's the second time someone said it to me today. They also I said know. in my post that that was in their toothpaste. And I could not. I've never heard of such a thing, you know. And it sounds like yeah. a very pleasant way to clean your teeth. So um, yeah, absolutely. The wild uh, strawberry. It's not well, just strawberries. Okay. Not, okay. This is not strawberry flavoring. This oh, is okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. You want like a smoothie or a milkshake then? No. Okay. Mr. Freeze. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can't take you strong. anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. So yeah, Plakov is kind of the one of the more popular kind of um, seaweed uh, based kind of products, but a lot of people are doing versions of that. Um, so yeah, absolutely. So that that works. That takes time, a five to eight weeks to to remove yeah. the tartar on the dog's teeth. It's a it's a slow removal of it. And it also works because it's anti-it's anti-inflammatory seaweed, so it has that benefit as well. Um, but it helps to remove the tartar. Tartar is the hard yellow stuff on teeth, guys. Humans are, don't really have uh, the tartar issue that we see on dogs. Dogs have that stuff that you saw on uh, Brown's skull, the tartar, the hard yellowy brown stuff that comes down over the teeth. That's from generally a lack of abrasion in the diet. It's from a lack of hassle factor that this stuff starts to accumulate on the teeth. Plaque is the invisible layer where the bacteria just live in your teeth all the time. No big deal. You've got it on your teeth. If that's all that's uh, plaque there, it's fine. But it's when you leave that alone and let it set and feed it uh, that you're going to start getting tartar issues. Someone said, what's the difference between that and discoloration? Discoloration would be from us drinking too much wine, smoking fags. Uh, that starts to stain the teeth, and that's a little bit of an issue. Uh, but generally, dogs' issues aren't really a staining issue generally. Now, there is colorants used in dry foods, God knows, and all sorts of things that uh, waters will do it, different types of water will do it. Yes, okay. But in general, the, the issue that we're seeing with dogs' teeth, I assume, Brendan, is tartar more than their staining. Yeah, we do see some staining, actually. Ah. You know, it's, it is seen, and people do concern themselves thinking it's plaque and, and you know, and, and then end into the tartar, the calcification of that plaque. So the, the matrices between the bacteria, you know, the, how they communicate, and then that becomes calcified with, you know, the stuff from the saliva and, and various other bits that are going into the mouth. Um, and those, um, those areas then almost protect, they create a shell over the bacteria. And going back to what we were saying about what else would we look at rather than just pain, it's the level of infection. So if you've got a dog with a heart murmur and he's already struggling with the heart and you've got to make a decision on teeth which not only have um, pain but maybe have infection on then actually sometimes you have to make that sooner rather than later mm. you don't have that six to eight weeks to try and clear their teeth yeah. Yeah. to try and get that because you've got circulating bacteria all the time yeah, yeah. if you've got a, a cat with renal disease you're not yeah. you know and they've got really bad teeth you're yeah. not necessarily going to leave them that six to eight yeah. weeks to yeah. make a recovery. Yeah. 
yeah um Makes you sense. know to clean their teeth up so um, that, that, that is a shame to hear that but you're absolutely spot on that will be your concern whereas yeah i can totally see that uh, kind of better they're gone than um worse they sit with it for a month and endanger themselves and put their yeah. condition into a place where you can't help them yeah that makes perfect sense uh, so regarding eating uh, so regarding eating bones just starting it off there and um, holly violet said would whole prey help with dental health absolutely so it's all yeah. about a hassle factor that we brush our teeth because we want to brush away that uh, plaque and stuff that builds up at night time uh and morning but uh, dogs aren't chewing enough okay there's a beautiful cattle dog dude eating that yeah. bone look at that that's a spine i think um so love you're gonna get teeth like that if you eat bones like that it makes perfect sense can you see the tooth everybody that the dog is using and uh, the tooth very closest to the bone that uh, triple triangular it's a triple kind of tipped tooth it's called a carnasal tooth check that out okay it's an absolute monster of a tooth that one there yeah and it's really interesting. You know that this animal, well, you know he's a meat eater, first of all, because the jaw, Bren's jaw, I can't get my camera right. Oh, <laughs> it just opens and closes, okay? So that's, you know, it's a meat eater. Well, the, the teeth at the side of the jaw, the carnasal tooth, actually come across each other like that, okay? They side yeah. past. So the top tooth sides past the one on the bottom, okay? That is for chopping chunks off okay that's why your dog will grab onto a large bit of zebra and shake his head because he's got no chewing ability we will chew 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 to get through something he doesn't have a chewy ability he's just got open and closed so all he's got is closed and then he shakes vigorously so a lot of that is that death shake that he does with his teddy that's one way of removing meat that is how he's cleaning his teeth he's holding on and he's pulling that stuff and the sinews and stuff that he's pulling through his teeth are cleaning the front teeth and stuff so if you want his back teeth cleaned, which are the trickier ones to get cleaned, he's got to have more hassle factor than just a chicken wing occasionally. So with the feeding of bones, uh, Brendan, I suppose, like, you know, there's lots of tips you can give, but the number one thing is feed right for the type. So Yeah, tell me uh, about that, because that, you have you've do a lot on, you know, that, and a lot of people have been asking, what's the right size? You know, they can't get them from the butcher and... And that's yeah, like, what would you be advising? Butchers, yeah, it's interesting. So, like, there's lots of infographics that are going around, and we will post one uh, of the more popular ones up on our Facebook page after this, uh, Brian. We'll do it tonight. And yeah. uh, so people can see it. Patricia Gatton's shared it on our page today. It's just really easy. I can't remember one of the uh, raw companies put it up. Done lovely, very simple infographic. But in short, uh, it'd be feed right for the type. So, smaller bones for smaller dogs, medium bones for medium dogs, and bigger bones for bigger dogs. So, for example, you might have a little Yorkie and he might have a chicken wing, okay? You can have big three-joint chicken wings, which is quite a large wing when you think about it, or you can have a small little one-piece chicken wing, depending if you have a mini Yorkie or a slightly bigger uh, toy breed. Moving up to, like, your chicken necks, which are about the size of an index finger, fantastic, covered in meat and sinew and little bits of bones, little neck bones in there, which aren't going to cause an issue in your dog. That's a fantastic bone. It's great for a small dog, but I've seen Labradors eating a pile of chicken necks and it's utterly terrifying because they don't chew them. They just put them up in the air and they swallow them like a seagull with a mackerel and it's like, oh. So I don't tend to give too many small meaty bones to bigger dogs. I give them to the smaller dogs. And if you move up to the medium knee-high dogs and collies and that kind of size, I'm going up for the duck necks now. I love a duck neck. Uh, they're readily available. They're cheap to buy. Uh, they're the perfect size. There's no fat on the outside. It's just a bit of meat and sinew and the round little bones in the middle of it. And then when you get to the large dogs, you know, your duck necks, your turkey necks, your carcass, your lamb ribs, lamb ribs for a collie either, venison ribs, neck, you know, you see lamb necks are being sold. Oxtail is just phenomenal for your bigger dogs. It's brilliant. But what we don't tend to use in dogs is large we try to avoid the weight bearing bones okay so in a chicken a chicken drumstick is the hardest bone in the body because that's the bit holding up the animal it's reinforced heavy much more zinc and iron and calcium than any other bones and dryer so it's hard bone for holding it up a pork leg bone will be the strongest bone in a pig and that's to hold up a mega heavy animal so those bones desiccated bones you see in the pet shop wrapped in plastic that's a pork femur cooked because it's serrano ham left over from the kind of the with spray night. tan yeah with spray tan on it and spray meat on it and then it's cooked again to preserve it and wrapped in plastic and it's sitting in a sweaty perspex box in it like guys that is pure dynamite if you're going to be a vet pulling bits of bones out of a dog's bum that's going to be the stuff the reason cook you don't I'll come back to the cook bones last i just want to finish the marrow bone point you use marrow bones for making broth guys don't give them to your dogs because what you get is you get there's a couple of different large bones there's the triangular shaped one which is your marrow bone, that your, your beef bone, okay? And it's hollow in the middle with all that delicious, nutritious marrow butter, which is fantastic. 
but that's all it's good for him because the problem is you get your German shepherd and he's going to put his chops around that and he's going to put down massive bite pressure to try and break down that bone after he's taken all the meat and fat off it. And one of two things is going to happen. It's shaped that way. First one is that the bone, teeth are going to skid off the bone and clash, smash, and you're going to fracture that carnasal tooth we were talking about, that monster tooth. Mm -hmm. And then Brand's going to have to come in and not just remove that tooth, but the teeth beside it, because the bloody thing is huge when it comes out of the jaw. Have you ever seen? Well, you have, Brandon. Well, <laughs> they're so big. I mean, you have to cut them into three pieces to take the roots out separately. If you're going to do that properly, that's why it's not just a, a, a an extract and pull out and they've often done the slab fracture so longevity you know uh, long lengthwise what they've done rather than just broken off across they actually break off an outside piece okay. and they end up slicing okay. almost halfway through that okay um and then you so you take out that bit which usually is stuck in the gum and you're left still with all of the roots to remove Love so yeah, yeah absolutely it's a it's a bit of a nightmare to to do that but there are some heavy bite breeds that will do that on all sorts of yeah. uh, of bone material yeah. so just be careful with that yeah so it's and the other thing is really that they have put down this immense bite pressure on a piece of bone like you said they'll do it on any bone they can do it on a lump of oxtail because there's a nice little round bone in there mm. but they put such immense pressure down that when the bone, bone finally gives way there's only one teeth one way those teeth are gone and that's slamming closed you know so mega pressure i would say that dogs are smaller hunters than a wolf they're scavenging carnivores they're not these uh, pursue uh, hunting pack animals that wolves were eating these ginormous prey they're much smaller bodies than that they i don't think beef it really is on the menu for dogs beef bones pork bones these sort of livestock is not something dogs normally and their bones are really really hard unfortunately as someone says there's bugger all bones available to people so when you go to the butcher the only bones that come into them are usually a bit of marrow bone and they chop up the marrow bone now you've got a nice sharp edge and it's just like oh geez so it's hard for people. Uh, so what you're left with, bone option wise, of the bones we just talked about, is to avoid the beef bones in the in the big piggies that are just going to to to. Now my dogs were reared on these sort of deep bones. The back garden used to look like a graveyard, but that was back in the day, and her teeth weren't great. So I have to admit. Uh, so I would say you know you can buy all sorts of poultry meat bones, and people are worried about uh, bones and uh, raw chicken bones. And I'd say guys, the difference between a raw bone and a cooked bone, a raw chicken wing is bendy and it goes snap when it breaks whereas if you overcook a chicken wing on the barbecue you get this brittle shard and go Tush, you know and you see those jagged bits what you see there is called a maillard reaction loads of temperature bonds protein to sugar and it makes for this very difficult to digest ultra hard bone material think overcooking the piece of steak and it's gone very tough to digest or or the white the white of the egg going from clear to white that's a maillard reaction so when you cook a bone you make a very dangerously brittle mass please don't give cooked bones they're the bits that vets are pulling out of dogs and also it's generally a dry fed dog in my opinion i know nothing about this this is a complete out in the limb but i would say raw fed dogs surely have a better processing ability and raw fed dog owners are less likely to feed cooked bones so you have a bit of a vicious circle they have a dry fed dog eating plant food and then he's given a cooked chicken bone on a sunday or a cooked yeah. lamb bone and that's just and, the worst. and remember you know that lamb necks and stuff like that are readily available yeah, but they're, they're, they're often you know there's good butchers rather than meat resellers will often have you know ribs and stuff like that from lambs uh and and piglets and things like that that, that are really good for them to chew yeah. through other little treat for for the, the the summertime especially i sometimes leave these a little bit frozen so you know remember even if they they they've got to grips with that and they can chew on it and if they do do that thing that they gulp down and remember unlike us and herbivores we like to chew and chew and chew and masticate and create this little bolus so that we can comfortably swallow yeah. a small little lump dogs are built to chomp and swallow big chunks yeah, yeah totally. they are designed to do that yeah. more so extra it's wide. only really if things are sharp yeah. and you know aren't cushioned with surrounding meat that it becomes more of a problem. So I generally find that those Labradors that stuff themselves with necks, um, they're absolutely fine. With they that. are. I've yet to see, I've yet to hear of an issue. I think it's extra yeah. wide keratinized neck. So it's even tougher neck than we are. It's waiting for all that lovely yeah. kibble. You know what I mean? And so carcasses <laughs> is another one. You can Carcass get chicken past. carcasses and give, yeah. leave those frozen and let them chew through them. Yeah. you know and, and be really good for them without having to think about oh it's just one bone it's loads of bones tied together with lots of sinews 
and yeah. material that's really good for brushing those teeth. Raw meaty bones. That was Tom Lonsdale was the first man to really blast those three words together. Raw meaty bones. So meat on the outside of the bone. Uh, the lubrication just goes down the neck much easier than a dry yeah, bone. That you all buy. that I mean, saliva. Yeah, you've got another favourite way of cleaning teeth, there, haven't you? You like the oh, yeah, um, I like this. See how you feel about this, Ben. I don't know. How to see, I see what the, see what the people think. But my but Dudley, I was getting groomed there a few months ago, and considering you know I'm supposed to be the the food guy, and you know now the teeth guy, and it's like okay, you know, Connor, when I picked the dog, your dog's teeth were great. I was like, <laughs> what? My dog teeth were perfect. <laughs> and when you think about it, so I haven't really been giving them that many bones because you know there's only one butcher that does it. He's a bit of a distance, and everyone's a meat reseller in Ireland because the Irish Department of Agriculture shut them all down uh, during uh, during and after BSE. So. Um, yeah, I kind of dropped the ball, and it's embarrassing. I go, bloody hell, the poor little man. So she says, no, brother, I sorted out ultrasonic toothbrush. I love groomers. Groomers have all the answers. They're just so good. Groomers are so good for business when I was in the raw dog food business. They're just behind you, and they push the right messages. So ultrasonic toothbrush is like a little rubber toothbrush. I don't need to tell you what it is. You've probably seen them, Ben, with little, very light rubber spikes, and she Dudley's a very good patient as long as you're right. sparing a door. Can I just interrupt you there? For all of those guys that are now looking at your husband's toothbrush, please don't go and use it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone's it's talking about not quite the problems. same. <laughs> yeah. but it's and pain, your husband won't forgive you. It's pain free. It's not. It's just a like you know. I mean, he doesn't even know it's moving. It lasts forever. This toothbrush, and they do these dental things for really, really cheap. If your dog doesn't mind us. Uh, and it worked. I'm telling you, she sent me a before and after picture. Now he gets kind of he gets all sorts of um, stuff in his diet to, to, to help. But uh, so it came off very simply. But she said one, maybe two visits, and uh, she can really clean up a mucky mouth. So, have you ever used that, Brennan? Is that not something you could bring into? Yeah. The so we've got clients that use them. Absolutely, we talk about them. You do need to do a bit of training. Some of them, you know, it's not like you can just get one and stick it in. Okay. okay. Um, I think you know you've got to get the the dogs used to the the noise as well okay. remember these are ultrasonic some of yeah. them they do make uh, quite a loud noise to some dogs that we okay. won't necessarily hear so yeah. just think about the training procedure i'm sure connor's got lots of stuff on his site about how to yeah. habituate dogs there. to noises and stuff like that so yeah. have a little look at that um uh, and that's but yeah I, I think especially for dogs where it's preventative um, it's really good, yeah. I think, and, and where the plaque is minor, so that it's actually plaque minor, and yeah. some gingivitis, yeah. not full-on cake yeah, tartar. Yeah, not like some bad shape. So, so what, what I would definitely got, say it's useful. What else do you think, Ben? And someone's saying here, okay, my dog doesn't like chewing on a bone. One little tip for chewing on a bone. Some dogs have, there was a rescue there on my page today. He'd never had a bone in his life, so when he was presented with a bone, they kind of look at it and go, I don't want meat on the bone. Uh, so that is because the dog wasn't reared on that material at all. Sometimes they look at it like Dudley looks at a tomato going, I'm going to eat you, but I'm not going to enjoy it. So I would say, but I wouldn't be feeding too many tomatoes to the dogs, by the way, guys. I'm sorry I keep talking. This came up second time. Stop feeding tomatoes to your dogs. Ignore me. But you know that face they get when they try to eat a mushroom? Jesus. Me, Connor. Go with something else that he doesn't like. I'm trying to pick a food that he doesn't really enjoy. I'm trying, I, I don't know. Anyway. I imagine I'm eating an orange. So he gets that face. So this dog wouldn't eat the bones. So I thought a little cheat. We do want him eating bones. It is really nice for him to do it. He's going to lie down. His heart rate will decrease. It's hassle factor. It's surely going to release dopamine in the dog. And the nutrition in bones, guys, it's not just about teeth cleaning. Like your bones, all the cart like dogs work like Lego. So muscle meat feeds their muscle. Cartilage feeds their cartilage. All your dogs can close me and chondroit, and anything he needs is coming from the cartilage of that joint. And bone feeds bones. He got nice fresh calcium. That's where they get it from. But there's other things in bones that people don't talk about. There's glucagon, glutathione. Uh, it's a mineral sink for rare minerals and copper and selenium and stuff. So the nutrition in bones is, is brilliant. We want this collie that doesn't like bones eating bones. I thought, what about, and I'm always saying this, a little bit of good quality salt sprinkled on the bone, top and bottom, and their dog, would you like to eat a slightly bit of salty meat? Uh, and he is going to lick that for sure, at least, and start playing with it. And you decrease the salt over time in the dream that with his favorite meat, on the bone okay find his favorite meat on the bone that would be one way to get uh, the dog on someone was asking me but here's the other question brendan uh any other alternatives okay we've talked about brushing we've talked about bones we've only a couple of minutes left we've only got one minute left yeah. um what else is there brendan wise can is there anything else people can chew that, that dogs can chew is there what, what else can you do well look what i would say is please we do not need to reinvent the bone do not go near some of those reconstituted highly calorific mm -hmm. full of grain horrible yeah. treats that are out there it's yeah. just not necessary avoid those uh, 
This should you know, be part of just, the Oh, so um, there, there are a lot of, um, you know, uh, dried treats, certainly I've seen. I would definitely say, for me, definitely speak, stick to things like necks if you were introducing them. Something that's really interesting, there's a, a product out there now for arthritis. And what they've done, they've reinvented the bone again in that they've now saying that if they expose the payers patches in the gut to raw um, uh, glucose, uh, sorry, chondroitin and, and um, uh, the cartilage, okay, within that, uh, the type 2s, type 2 cartilages, what happens is that it actually prepares the immune system and makes it so they don't react to the damaged cartilage that's in their own joints. And so actually, if you're feeding raw bones, you're doing that without buying these special expensive treats. No way. And yeah. so actually, it's an, another use for those dogs with arthritis to think, actually, do you know what? Feed them this. They'll get their payers patches in their gut exposed to this raw cartilage, okay, this type 2 cartilage, and that will reduce the inflammation in their joints. And they've got the evidence behind that. Bloody hell. So. That's fab. Look at look yeah. at those. You know, there's, yeah. there's things like that. Bones are brilliant, you know, and look at some of the stuff, like a raw meaty stuff with meat on it. And I would definitely say, look, there are ways to fool your dogs and cats. Indeed, you know, my cat uh, will take the duck necks. I just chop them up. OK, uh, she's a bit of a thief for stealing the dog's stuff out of the dog's bowl when I'm preparing the food anyway. Um, but, you know, remember mouse sized meals, chicks mice yeah. you know for cats they're yeah. great you know they're available you know yeah. readily um used for for reptiles so they're available uh, in those circumstances so you can use those some young small dogs so chihuahuas and things like that great again great for them uh, you can get those really easily um yeah and you can get a like great food bones. shop near us that does them for pet foods okay Steph, you are mentioning her yeah, a lot of raw, raw suppliers sell the bones as well. If you can't get it from your local butcher, you should try them first. And the bits of poultry down in the down in uh, your local supermarket, there's the raw suppliers. You've got like uh, Dogs Absolutely. Butcher, Paleo Ridge. You've got um, any of the – they're all selling something to go with it. There's some necks or, you know, so they're all aware mm -hmm. that you need this stuff and they do supply it. Generally, it's, it, it's a, it sucks to have to buy bones because they're bulky to ship. So not a lot goes in the box. So they're quite expensive for raw suppliers. You think, oh, they're ripping me off. Why would it be three euro for a marrow bone? Because bones don't pack well in the box. You know, they like to fill the box up when they send it to you. So they have to charge for these bones because someone has to bag it and chop it and put it in. And, you know, uh, so but those suppliers do have them. So look around online. You type in the name of bone you want, you'll find it. Someone's going to give it to you, you know, so. Uh, chicken necks, duck necks, turkey necks, that's a great cheat. That's the easiest way yeah. to do it. And you can get your raw dog food from them at the same time. You can you can keep it British or Irish or whoever's doing it. Um, what, are chi what about chicken feet and duck feet? They're absolutely fine, yeah. Uh, I can't believe they've got that big claw, and I can't believe that's not a problem to dogs. I just can't believe it. How I had a do? lovely client just uh, just yesterday asking if they could trim the nails off the chicken's feet before they them to the dog. I understand <laughs> <that>. <laughs> They're giving them to the husband to, to yeah. use the nail clippers, yeah. clip the nails up, and then feed them to yeah. the dog. Yeah, except I don't like when chickle, chick, chick, chickle feet, when chicken feet have bumble foot, you know, that bit of black kind of, oh, oh. Yeah. well, it's a bit of infected oh, tissue, you know, it's poor welfare chickens will get Sitting that around stuff, in so. his own poo for 11 yeah. weeks, my God, not for me, um, okay. Friend. Yeah. Uh, okay, guys. Listen, it's a uh, 1948. See, we didn't even, and we're still talking crap. <laughs> and and I, I resisted posting the uh, the old Billy Goat, but you should uh, have done it. Yeah, I, I think what I might do is post that on the Facebook. Page there you go. So yeah. You we can choose vote. what you want. If he vote. doesn't turn up next week, you can yeah. choose which picture you want. Vote in your favourite, Nick. Yeah. So listen, thanks to the sponsors tonight again. Paleo Ridge, uh, fantastic supporters for the last few weeks. Uh, so really appreciate that. You can check them out at paleoridge.co.uk. And as always, on Patreon. Uh, got dot com guys you'll find us uh, raw pet medics on patreon.com uh, price of a cup of coffee uh, each month is would be more than enough and it keeps us going uh, the more the merrier of that but don't worry if you can't afford it it's free to view uh, as always and for those of you that have done it we really really appreciate it and uh, we're going to be moving our questions after the show that for people that have seen it and didn't get it live we're going to be moving the questions and answers to patreon uh, just as a home for people yeah, yeah. to find that we'll do that in the future 
um, okay. because we're getting a furious amount. You can see the speed of the likes have gone up on the page, which is really nice. Thanks very much. Tell all your friends. Uh, but you, and we will get your questions in a more formal way, uh, and we're doing our best. And thanks to Brendan and um, his uh, lovely wife, Chris, for sorting out a lot of the questions and answers that you're getting. Uh, so um, keep them coming, guys. We really appreciate that. Yeah, and keep following. Yeah, keep following, sharing the page. You know, it's great to see you guys out there. Uh, it gets us spread around. I mean, after the, I think probably the uh, overwhelming success of last week uh, about yeah. neutering is probably what's absolutely. Uh, a couple of days. Yeah. Poor Nick, he's, he's feeling a bit off it as well, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's depleted. Yeah, he'll be back. He'll be turbocharged and extra large next Indeed. week. So, yeah. um, listen, guys, thanks very much. And we will see you all next week. We'll announce what we're, we're thinking about um, during the week. But if you've got requests, uh, please keep them coming in. We do take them all seriously. And uh, things get bumped up to the top of the list based on what people are telling us. So, yeah. absolutely, keep it coming. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks for joining us. Cheers, guys. Thank you right. so much. It's Have been brilliant to see you all. And thanks, thanks.